Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book Guns, Germs, and Steel, The Fates of Human Societies. In 1972, the author Jared Diamond was walking along the beach in New Guinea when a local friend Yali asked him, Why is it that you white people developed so much cargo and brought it to New Guinea, but we black people had little cargo of our own? To his surprise, Dr. Diamond found it difficult to answer this seemingly simple question. Why is that so? Yali's question may seem like a simple question about the difference in the production of goods, but his question actually contains many hidden caveats. Why for example did the people of New Guinea still seem to be living in the Stone Age two centuries ago, while the Europeans already had a wide variety of inventions such as steel axes, gunpowder, garments, soft drinks, and umbrellas? Taking a closer look at the difference in lifestyles of these two groups of people, we may connect it to the broader spectrum of disparities in the modern world, and ask why is it that people of Eurasian origin including those who have settled in North America control most of the world's wealth and power today. Moreover, some ethnic groups like the indigenous peoples of Australia, the Americas, and Sub-Saharan Africa no longer hold their homeland but have been subjugated or even wiped out. Around the start of the 16th century, European countries began to occupy territories all over the world. Why was it the Eurasians who conquered and subjugated native peoples rather than the Native Americans, Africans, and Australian Aborigines conquering or subjugating the Eurasians? Some people claim that around that time, Eurasia already had many advanced empires with all kinds of technological and weapons advantages that people in other parts of the world did not. It was these technological and political differences that led to the inequalities that we see in the world today. While this is an obvious answer, the deeper question remains as to what caused these differences in the first place. Historically, certain groups have claimed that Europeans are naturally more intelligent and genetically superior to other races. Of course, today we know that such an explanation is not only racist and offensive, but also factually incorrect. So, what is the true cause of these differences? In the years since his conversation with his friend, Dr. Diamond has conducted significant research into human evolution, history, and language, and he published Guns, Germs, and Steel 25 years later as an attempt to answer Yali's question. Like the third chimpanzee which we unlocked in a previous bookie, Guns, Germs, and Steel has also won the Royal Society Science Book Prize for Dr. Diamond. In addition, it was a New York Times bestseller and has won the Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction. The book reveals some broad environmental factors that have benefited the historical development of certain regions of the world, thereby debunking anthropological theories based on race and racial superiority. At the same time, it offers possible causes for many of the inequalities that we see in the world today. It can be regarded as a true history of the peoples of the world. In this bookie, we will introduce the book in three parts. Part 1, Guns, Germs, and Steel. Part 2, Time, Flora and Fauna, and Geographical Barriers. Part 3, China, Oceania, and Africa. In order to give a final answer to Yali's question, let's start from the direct causes that first led the Europeans to migrate to the New World, and not the other way around. These causes include military technology, infectious diseases, political organization, writing, and maritime technology among other things. Just like the title of this book, part one of our bookie will also talks about guns, germs, and steel, which summarizes the key factors that enabled Europeans to conquer new territories. First, let's look at their military technology which consisted of guns, steel weapons, and horses. The conflict between the more technologically advanced Old World and the so-called New World began in 1492, when Italian explorer Christopher Columbus set sail across the Atlantic Ocean from Spain. In the following years, the most dramatic moment of the Age of Exploration took place in the Andes Mountains of South America in 1532, when the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro met the Inca Emperor Atahualpa for the first time. At the time, Atahualpa was the ruler of the largest most advanced country in the New World with millions of subjects and an 